Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I've got some important breaking news this morning, but first I'm going to do a quick follow up on yesterday's Angelina Jolie show. Now, first of all, one of you found a very real voodoo connection in her life. Let's go to that right now. And we had already made some connections to her life in terms of the voodoo aspect, but there's one more aspect that we hadn't right, you know, we hadn't really looked into yet. Her and Brad lived on Governor Nichols Street in the French Quarter for several years. This is their home here. You can see it right here in the French Quarter. And they just had put this house up on the market. And they actually had to reduce the price to under a, a million dollars because it wouldn't sell. Now, the crazy thing is that this street that the house was on is getting renamed, actually. Why is it getting renamed? Well... It's the cancel culture once again, right? Now, this particular Governor Nichols, which is the street that their mansion was on, is receiving a new name. And because this guy was a general for the Confeds, he was a Southern sympathizer. And so they are renaming this particular street where the mansion is located. But I also wanted to read a comment from Biblical Truther 81. He had some some good insight into this particular mansion and Angelina Jolie and all this stuff. He said he worked in New Orleans and lived 45 minutes away. Jolie and Brad have a house in the French Quarter. It's actually on Governor Nichols Street, not Bourbon Street, but this he thought it was on Bourbon Street. The haunted tours stopped by their house, which is an old slave quarters, according to the tour guides, which is a focus of hauntings. This house is very close to St. Louis Cathedral across from Cafe du Monde, where this area is heavily entrenched with voodoo shops and tarot card and palm readers on the sidewalks also surrounding the church. Some say her neighbors are voodoo witches and priestesses. So, very, very bizarre, very weird. Now, they bought this home after Katrina, apparently, saying that they wanted to help the people there, but there could have been a, a double mission going on there when they moved there. Now, I also forgot to mention to you guys that Jolie is being sued by Brad Pitt. Here's the story here. And she is being sued. Why? Because she sold their winery to a Russian Rushkin oligarch. There's the headline right there. Look at the date, just days before the invasion. You guys, the oligarchs are the ones getting all their property confiscated right now around the world. This is three days before the invasion. Now, who is the oligarch that she sold this winery to? Well, lo and behold, Yuri Scheffler says down here in the article, who is Yuri Scheffler? Well, he's taking a financial hit right now due to sanctions being placed directly on him by countries around the world. Here's the winery right here. If you don't know Yuri Scheffler's name, he is the founder of Stoli's Vodka. And it's being pulled off the shelves as we speak. Stoli rebrands vodka and will no longer use Stoli name amid Rushka invading Stu Crane. And they had to probably rename it because these things are being pulled off the shelf. So let's get into this breaking news that I wanted to share with you guys. And I won't be showing this video, but I will be linking it in the pinned comment because Rushka is now claiming that they found documents dated on the day of the invasion telling scientists to destroy a bunch of evidence and documents relating to a secret bioweapons program involving the U.S. and the Stu Crane. Now, we haven't seen these documents. All we have is the word of this woman here telling us what the soldiers found. But they are saying that they are going to go through all this evidence and gather it and present it in the coming days. Now, 
the bioweapons that are listed in these documents are about the worst you could imagine. And of course, this is against national law. International law. So I'll link this video. I'm not going to play it because, again, YouTube's flagging any any videos that play anything from these channels. But I wanted to talk a little bit more about iPad Go 2 because now it seems as though this image in iPad Go 2 is making more and more sense, isn't it? Juan Pepito in in iPad Go 2, drowning in toxic waste bioweapons, it appears. And in this case, let's play this in slow motion here. You can see the Lotus drowning into the toxic waste. Now, what could that represent? There's the Lotus drowning into the toxic waste. Well, I believe that Lotus is the Kamala, is the Biden down the drain and of course the former soviet union and their symbol of the sickle and hammer is widely known so i wanted to dig into this a little bit further because what was bothering me was that there was who is this character here who is he so i went into google earth and i typed in juan pepito because this is the name that Heliophant, the makers of iPad Go 2, give this individual. They call him Juan Pepito. And as you can see here, let's go back into the gallery so you can see the little uh, caption that they have for him. Here it is. It says, after years of economic exploitation and the environmental degradation, Juan Pepito has a decidedly sinking feeling. So, that sounds about like what's happening in the Stu Crane, doesn't it? And these are the allegations that the Rushkins are saying. They're saying, look, the Stu Crane was used. They were economically exploited. Uh, their environment was degraded due to all of these programs going on within their borders. The people were being used. This is, these are the assertions and allegations by Rushka against the U.S. and the rest of NATO. So, what could all this mean? Well, I went into Google Earth, into the borders of Ukraine, and we're going to look at that right now. Because this is really, really weird. So, here's Ukraine. I'm going to outline it with a little hand here so you could see the borders of it here. Okay, And all I did was I typed in Pepito. Watch what happens when you type this in. Let me zoom it up a little bit. We're in the borders of the Stukraine. And I'm just going to do a simple search for Pepito. And what do we have? Oh, they're not going to show it this time, are they? Let's try it again. Google Earth is really weird. Let's try it again. Ah, was it erased overnight? Let's zoom in a little bit further because it's actually right here. Let's try it again. They've erased these pizzerias where I found them yesterday. We're going to go zoom in though and I'm going to show them to you because I have them marked here. Now this is the town of Lviv. I don't know how you pronounce that, but it's spelled L-V-I-V. -V. Let's try it one more time. There they go. So, there are the two Pepitos. And they are pizzerias. And there's actually lots of Pepitos all across Stu Crane. But I have them marked here. Here's one. Let me make it bigger. Pepito Pizza Restaurant. Which is weird, right? Why would there be a spanish or mexican sounding pizza place in a place like stew crane well i guess they're highly westernized here so i could see possibly how that could happen but there are two on the same street here's the another one pepito pizza restaurant now maybe this means something in the stew crane like maybe pepito means little restaurant or something or little pizza restaurant i don't know 
that's not where my research took me, but it's entirely possible. Well, let's zoom out here and see if there's other pepitos across Stu Crane. It appears as though there's at least one more, a pizzeria pepito. There may be some others in the eastern part of the country, but it appears as though these are the ones, and they all seem to be in a line, don't they? They all seem to be in a line. Let's zoom back in here, because I found something strange when I was looking at these pepito restaurants. They're very close together, and they are next to a lab. Now, this is supposedly a DNA lab, this lab here. And let me go to back in here into this so I can show you what this lab is. It's called DNA Solutions. Now, it seems like no big deal, right? It says Human Animal Forensic Research and Development. Everything sounds like it's on the up and up. But if we are to believe Rushka's allegations, then this could be a cover for something else, couldn't it? So, what did I do? I went into and found this map here that everybody knows about because these are the supposed list of all of the bio laboratories in the Stu Crane. And I placed it over google earth to see if any of those labs were near this location and look what i found let me turn it on okay it's on now i'm going to zoom out and as we zoom out that red dot that you see right here is the location of one of these alleged bio labs now as i continue to zoom out You'll see how I placed this over. I overlaid the map that's out there that shows where all the locations of the biolabs are. Now, some people believe that Rushka actually took these out, and that that was the uh, you know the target of the sh of the strikes. But I don't think that that was what was going on. I think they might have been taking out support and military around those sites so they can get to the sites but why would they hit the site that would just release the toxins and kill a bunch of people wouldn't it so i don't believe that's what was really going on so if you look at the map of the strikes they're close but they're not right on it so apparently Stu crane is defending these bio labs which caused rushka possibly to take them out so they can get to the labs and all the while they were basically uh, destroying this evidence, allegedly, according to what Rushka is saying. Now, this is really weird, because here you see all these other dots where all these biolabs are. But Pepito gives it away, doesn't he? Pepito gives it away, according to IPET Go 2, because it's near these pizza joints that we just identified. And there's the red dot right there. And there, it looks like there are more north of here let's turn on the cities here see if we can't figure out if uh actually they're already on let's turn this off so you guys can see again so let's see what else might be in these areas where these biolabs might be right the only big city here is Lviv, where pepito pizzerias are but what are these other two dots right here this one and this one where there might be biolabs Let's zoom in on here and see if there are any major cities. Doesn't appear to be. This is kind of like in rural areas where these other two alleged biolabs are. This one seems to be within some kind of somewhat of a bigger city here. Zoom this up. So that was the research that I did. And it's really weird because Pepito seems to reveal the truth, doesn't he? Now, understand that when you search Pepito in the Ukraine, these two in Lviv are the only ones really that show up in the entire country other than the other one that I showed you down below. 
Let's zoom back out again. So let's take a closer look at this character sinking into the bio waste. Juan Pepito. Because I think there's still more clues about this guy. Now, what you're going to notice is this chipped tooth, right? And there's something weird about this because there is a production company called Pepito Productions. Let's go to that right now. And they're filming this film, or were filming, this was back in 2020, a film called Cosa Nostra. Now we're going to get into the Mafia. Here's the filming of Cosa Nostra by Giovanni Dota. And as you can see here, Pepito Productions is the name of the cinema. And it is filmed in Stu Crane, or was filmed in Stu Crane. I don't know if this has come to uh, market yet has been released but the storyline is all about the rush or the mafia and in this case the italian mafia specifically now when you look at pepito's production page here it is right here they explain that this is all about the italian mafia pepito productions italian culture worldwide so there's something here isn't there so then I notice this chipped tooth. Let's go back to Juan Pepito here. Notice the chipped tooth. So I was like, what is that about? Well, apparently this is a mafia thing. Because mafia will put the pop stick inside someone's mouth to take them out instead of putting it to their temple. So it's a signature. Here's a book here that actually talks about it. What's the name of this book? It's called Murder by the Grace of God, the CIA and Pope John Paul I by Lucien Grigore. And in this book, he talks about the Italian mafia. Let me read this. Tornay's two front teeth had been knocked out as if someone had shoved the gun into his mouth. He would not have broken his teeth if... He had shot himself. One does not normally shoot oneself in the mouth, as the chance of survival is substantial. Swiss Guard would know this. Scotland Yard statistics yield a 95% chance one will raise the gun horizontally to the temple. Firing a gun into the mouth originated in the Sicilian Mafia to terrorize the victim. One does not terrorize oneself. Here's a second book that talks about the same thing. This book is uh, Kill Me Tomorrow. And in this book, they talk about the same thing. When I picked up the tape this morning, I, sh uh, I shot a hood named Frankenstein. Around dawn, Lieutenant Wheaton found his body two miles from here, clear out at the end of something called Jackrabbit Street. And wherever that is, it's not where I shot him. One of his front teeth was broken off in the middle. Apparently recently, he had also a fat lip. So, this is a mafia thing. So, who is Juan Pepito? Well, I'm still on the trail of that. And so, I was like, okay, what is going on here? So, I thought, what the heck is does the Italian mafia have to do with Stu Crane? And then I looked back in Google Earth. Now, this is chilling. Because once again, I'm going to show you something you wouldn't expect to find inside the borders of Stu Crane. Watch this. I typed in Cosa Nostra, right? Now, some of you live in the Ukraine. Well, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. You type in Cosa Nostra. And we've well, got to zoom in again. I don't know why this is doing this this time. It was all good yesterday. Cosa Nostra. And it appears as though there are several locations within the borders of the Ukraine of Cosa Nostra restaurants as well. 
So we have Pepito and Cosa Nostra restaurants confirming that there's a very strong association between the Ukraine and this Cosa Nostra. Let's click on this one here. This is a restaurant once again. So we have Pepito and Cosa Nostra restaurants. Now, I don't know if this is just a common thing. I know that Stu Crane is a huge country. Here's another restaurant once again. I don't know if there's a lot of Italians in Stu Crane and these this is what they just name their restaurants, but I've never heard of a restaurant called Pepito or Cosa Nostra until I did this research. So there's two. There's actually a third one here, I think, if, it, if this searched correctly. Oh, why wow, this is searching funny. Let's zoom in up again and do another search here for Cosa Nostra. Okay. Looks like we just have the two. Oh, there's a third one here. So now the search comes up. So here's a third Cosa Nostra. Again, a restaurant. So these restaurants are sprinkled throughout some of these major cities. Are these chains? If they are chains, and that even lends more credibility to the fact that these two clues were in Pet Goat, and that they were in fact in this image talking about Stu Crane. Let me go back to it. Weird, right? Now, I did hear some grumblings that some of the Yahtzees that were in the Eastern Blue Crane were Italians, but it's too small of a minority to, to matter, I think, you know, against the backdrop of the bigger picture. But this is pretty much where the trail ends on this scene from iPad Coat 2. And we will be on top of it when Rushka provides the proof of these labs in the documents and all this. We'll cover that on the show. Now let's get into some more of these headlines today because this is supposed to be a headline show. I'm going to go back in here and make sure you guys are all right before we continue on with these headlines. So what do you guys think about this information before we get into these headlines? What are your thoughts on it? Have you seen any breaking news about these labs and this secret bioweapons program? So... Cheyenne says that's the ancient bloodline Italian. Washing money, says Sanja. Probably Azal Bat Battalion is Academy, aka Blackwater. All right. They definitely went after the biolabs, I think, says Eric. Yeah, but you notice the maps don't completely overlay. It's like they were very close to them. So I'm thinking they were taking out like defense. Because of course the Stukraine probably were defending those labs. If all of this is true, right? They were defending them. So they probably took out like battalions and stuff around the surrounding areas. And then were able to go in. Yes, Cosa Nostra is Italian Mafia. And that's what the movie was about. By Pepito Productions. So this is the way Pet Goat works. It works with little clues. And then you have to kind of put the puzzle pieces together. But once you do. It creates a very complete picture. And it's also nested. It's a nested reality. So sometimes these uh, decodes. Manifest on top of one another. So things can mean multiple things. Have multiple interpretations. So let's get into some of these headlines because this is crazy. So the world is finally standing up against the mandates and the smack scenes, aren't they? And I'll put links to all this, you guys. I just want to make sure we cover all these tabs here just to show you that the mafia is alive and well. I wanted to cover this economist cover as well. But we'll put that back here. We'll do that on another day. Put that back here. So. Basically everyone's starting to rise up against these mandates. And the smack scenes aren't they? 
And with the truckers in Canada and now in the U.S., this is starting to happen. But I'm wondering if it's too late. I'm wondering if it's too late. And I think it might be because the time to rise up was when only 15% of the people got this vaccine. That would have been the time to rise up when we were not a minority. But now we're being pigeonholed as a fringe minority. And you simply can't get enough people to join a protest to make it tell the truth about the number of people that are upset about it because everybody can't leave their homes. It's, it's physically impossible for half of America to show up to a protest or three quarters of America to show up to a protest. Nor are most people able to join protests or they don't have the ability or the desire to join a protest, even if they are standing in solidarity with these people. I'm thinking the only way to really do something like this would be some kind of electronic poll that asked people how they felt. Instead of, you know, gathering all these people together and still being called a fringe minority. Because that's what they're trying to do. We have to be honest about all of this, right? You can't get enough people together to make to, to tell the true picture of how people really feel. And then we've got most people still going along with some of these individual employer mandates, uh, the school mandates, and the local government mandates that are still putting in place, you know, the, the masks. This is still happening across a large part of the country. Some of these uh, orders are still in place, and even mandatory smack scenes to get into certain businesses. So we don't have the majority anymore. So it's almost too little, too late. Now, by now, these truckers have already arrived at D.C., but according to reports, they are not going to be permitted to enter into the crapper hole. So, as it sits now, they're driving in a circle around it. And probably, I don't know, they're driving in a circle around D.C. So, you got to ask yourself, is this really worth it? Too little, too late. Maybe they should shift their focus onto the private mandates and the smack scene passports and make that be the message, which is now the cutting edge of the erosion of freedom surrounding the smack scenes. What the controllers have done here is created a class of people that are discriminated against based on their personal medical choices. In other words, those who comply get to experience enhanced freedoms that we don't get. So they've essentially criminalized bodily autonomy. And in Canada, they froze people's bank accounts and their Bitcoin accounts. And there was no backlash or accountability from the people. You know, I don't doubt the intentions of the individuals joining this convoy and the truckers. I know their hearts and efforts are in the right places. But now I, I fear that the effectiveness of all this has just really been lost. So we'll have to keep an eye on this and how it proceeds. And uh, hopefully, you know, something good comes of it. But with what happened in Canada, I can see that spilling over here. You know, freezing people's accounts and all this. I don't know. We'll see what happens, you guys. Let's get on to some of these other stories here. Now... I feel like not enough people are awake yet to the right-left paradigm. And they find themselves right back in it, thinking that Thump is going to solve this problem. Because they're so angry at what the left is doing. Well, Thump isn't going to solve the problem. He's part of the reason why we're in the problem. Vidco was the setup to censorship happening right now about other things in the news like Stu Crane. They wouldn't have been able to do all this censorship if they didn't first do it with Vidco. The whole cancel culture came out of Vidco, didn't it? So, the Rushkins in America pretty much are experiencing this cancel culture right now. As they are just an internment camp away from how the Japanese were treated during World War II. Their property is being taken they're being cancel cultured in the media. Their businesses are all suffering for Rushkins that had absolutely nothing to do with what's going on right now. Just because they won't condemn what's happening. 
And that is simply unbelievable. We've gone back in history now, 80 years in history, and we're treating people the way we used to 80 years ago. Now, the Rushkins seem to want to end this, and they've made some pretty reasonable, de reasonable demands, despite what this headline says here. Let's read this. Rushka reveals harsh demands for ending the war as talks begin. Let's read about these harsh demands. All they're asking is for Stukraine to halt its military activity, change its constitution to include neutrality, which every constitution should have. Or this is this was the track that they were on originally, weren't they? Neutrality. So it can't join EU or NATO. Which is what the U.S. promised the whole time over the last several decades. And NATO, we, they all promised that, that there wouldn't be a bunch of new NATO countries. Right? And then it says, recognize Crimea as Russian territory and recognize independence for the separatist regions of Donetsk and Lugansk. Doesn't seem all that unreasonable to me. And they're saying that they would cease fire immediately. That's not what it says here, but... This is what they're saying, that they would stop all operations immediately if these demands were met. Well, apparently these are very unreasonable demands. And the PSYOP is working because Americans are falling for the same old tricks again. New York Times is reporting here that American vets are coming out of retirement to defend Stu Crane. They're actually hopping on planes and going there to fight the Rushkins. Now, when you haven't even sufficiently defended our own domestic rights from the erosion of our freedoms by our own government, burdensome taxes, corruption, illegal wars, vidco, and some vaccine mandates, forced unnecessary energy policies based on environmental lies. How dare you go to fight for another country? What is wrong with you? Do you not see what America has become? Let's read this. I just can't stand by. American vets joined to fight in the stew crane. Hector served two tours in Rack Rack as a Marine. Then he got out. Got a pension and a civilian job. Then got forced to get the Pokemon. No, it doesn't say that. And thought he was done with... His service, but Friday he boarded a plane for one more deployment. Sometimes I just think people like to fight. They want a reason to take people out. They don't even know how to act after they've done that several times. Once you've taken someone's life, you really don't know how to stop doing it. This is all just done under the guise of war and freedom. What better thing to fight for, right? And brainwash people for. So this guy doesn't mention how his fellow Marines have been forced be, you know, to get a Pokemon sticker against their own bodily autonomy, which is the worst type of erosion of your freedoms that you can imagine. Someone forcing you to put something in your body and threaten your entire livelihood. He doesn't talk about that. He doesn't talk about that. But he's been brainwashed and there he goes. As are many other people from other countries. Foreign fighters they're calling them. Now on the battlefield. Helping to battle Rushka. Well, I got news for you. This is not going to end well. This is not going to end well. And all they have to do. All Stu Crane has to do. Is agree to be neutral. And not join. They, they're not even asking to replace. The president there. Or put him in jail. They're simply asking for them not to join a border country on their border. To join NATO. That's it. But apparently that's too much to ask. And now they're handing out pop sticks to all the citizens. Which is now causing chaos in the streets over there. They've let all of the worst criminals out of jail. Or is also increasing the violence. And now we have a mess. Now I don't 
agree that Rushka should have gone in. There probably could have been other ways to do this. They could have said, hey, instead of going in, we'll just cut off supply of natural gas to Europe. That They should have said that first. And that would have bent the arm of NATO to, to not get Stukraine involved. That's the way they should have done it. Use your the, the Rushkin resources that you have to do exactly what the U.S. is doing to them. Sanctions, right? Now, many of you will remember this story. And I told you guys that this was, thing was going to materialize into something far more serious. Former, uh, so Rushka could use the WNBA star Brittany Griner as a high profile hostage. Remember this? It's now escalated into this kind of rhetoric. And here we go. Now, what bothers me about this headline is what about all the low, pro low profile hostages out there? Just because she's in the WNBA, that's some kind of achievement? Apparently it is. So, this is what they're saying. She's now become a pawn in this whole thing. They didn't care too much about her when they started whipping out sanctions everywhere and pulling all the Rushkin stuff off the shelves, did they? Apparently not. But they'll make this a big deal. And if anything happens to this woman, it could spark something off, couldn't it? Or it would be the reason or the catalyst that they use to spark something off. Let me close Google Earth so we don't get caught buffering. All right. Now, let's keep going here. A couple more headlines. I'm going to save some of these for tomorrow so the show isn't too long. But now the media is now roasting Pew Sit and Spin for destroying civilian infrastructure. This is the new latest thing that they're saying. That he's destroying civilian infrastructure and killing civilians. If if Pew Sit and Spin really wanted to start taking out a bunch of civilians, don't you think he'd be just sitting perched at some of these evacuation routes or strafing them? Of course he would. The goal is not to kill civilians, but as we've said as a country many, many times, uh, those are called, uh, you know, those are just casualties of war. Collateral damage. Was it worth it? Was it worth it? They asked the defense secretary. And she says it was. Everybody remembers the quote. And now. We obviously have a situation here. Where they are trying not to take out civilians. But we know how war works. And oftentimes. The innocent get hurt. Which is why I never promote anybody invading anyone. Unless you are being invaded by someone else, then you have the right to defend your space on this planet. But going in other countries and all this, I don't agree with. But look at this. They're trying to roast Pew Sit and Spin because they're saying he's taking out these civilians. But why would he do that to the very people that he is saying that he's trying to liberate? Many of these places are Russian speaking. One of the reasons Mr. Pew Sit and Spin cited as a justification for the war on Stu Crane was alleged discrimination against Stu Crane's Russian speakers. Most of the Rushkin shelling that destroyed a residential block was has targeted civilians in the country's Rush, Rushkin speaking areas. Now, why would he do that? Why would he take out his own people in Stu Crane? That would just work against him, wouldn't it? Wouldn't the more logical explanation be that the Blue Cranians hit their own buildings to make it look like Pewson and Spin did it? I think so. I'd rather go with that belief. Now, if some of the shelling that was happening was directed toward non-Rushkin-speaking areas where there were hardly any Rushkins, then I would not make that assumption. But... This just stinks to high heaven. Now, this is a uh, this is out of this story here. Just so I give you the reference. What is this? World Stu Crane resumes evacuation attempts as Rushka presses the offensive. Oh, this is Wall Street Journal. That's the reference here to 
them identifying that most of these places they got hit were mostly Rushkin speaking people. I don't think that the Rushkins hit these places. And they like basically expose themselves right here as they try to, you know, do a fact check. It makes absolutely no sense. So let's keep going here. I've got a couple more stories for you guys. Now, as if there was any way to get involved in this whole conflict without starting World War III, we're now sending jets? Really? I mean, all it takes is one of these jets to have an American pilot in it, and all of a sudden we're poking the bear beyond the point of no return. NATO nations can send jets to Stu Crane. Ban on imports of Rushkin oil being discussed. Live updates. So, we are now going to send fighter jets. This is starting to look like Top Gun, isn't it? Now, look, if Rushka was on Alaskan shores trying to make a move on America, I would say we have every justification in the world to, for all the countries in the world to get involved to stop that from happening. But this whole blue cranian thing isn't our business. And we've done far worse in the world, unopposed and unsanctioned by the countries of the world. We are the aggressor, it seems. Now, China has been calling us out lately, haven't they? For wiping out the Native Americans in America. China calls what the U.S. did to Native Americans that word. And I agree with them. It, probably in a less aggressive way, but in, still the word applies nonetheless. Chinese Embassy in D.C. has released a statement titled The American Geno Side of the, the Indians. Historical facts and real evidence in the news section of its website. Statement identifies the definition of that word and goes on to state that according to international laws and domestic laws, what the United States did to the Indians covers all the acts that defined genocide. So, China is making moves and they're starting to seem to oppose and align with Rushka, which, be which begs the question, why do we trade so heavily with these countries? Why? Now, got a couple more stories here. Here's a funny story. These uh, mail, mail carriers are getting attacked by turkeys. Now, this is in Sacramento where I grew up. Anytime you have wild turkeys running around terrorizing people, you would think it would be a good time to extend the hunting season, wouldn't you? Now, we've had discussions about how the controllers like to protect the weirdest animals that are in no danger of going extinct. And here's a good example. you got wild turkeys running around. I don't remember all these turkeys growing up. And now there's millions of turkeys running around California. In fact, they've become a nuisance. They're starting to attack mail carriers. And, you know, you get situations like this. You go down to Florida, and there's sharks everywhere. Ask the people in Jupiter, Florida. They can't even reel up a fish without getting... It bit in half or taken completely by a shark. They're spending, you know, probably millions of dollars in tackle wasted because sharks come up and eat them. Why? Because the sharks are protected. You can't kill or eat a shark. Not that I'd want to, but, you know, maybe if they put some controls or, you know, let go of some of these controls on some of this stuff, then the balance of nature would come back into effect, wouldn't it? Now, apparently, there was a, a tornado in Iowa. I drove through Iowa once, and uh, it was beautiful to me. Lots of rolling hills, farmland, big, big hills, the kind of hills that look like mountains, but they're really hills. But here's what's going on in Iowa. Let's see if we could play some of this video. Let's refresh this. So here's some of these uh, tornadoes here. Let's blow this up. Look at that. Whipping around here. 
That's just crazy. Now, I don't know how many people got hurt or died. Here's another shot here. See that big tornado spinning off there? Wow. Iowa. Now, I didn't know Iowa had tornadoes, but apparently they do. And that's what's going on over there. Let me go back into the chat here. I'll put links to all this in the pinned comment for you guys as we start to wind down the show here. Thanks, everybody, for showing up today. We'll be back on here tomorrow with some more headlines as well as... A bizarre revelation that came to me last night in my sleep. I almost woke up and wrote it down, but I just tried to remember it. I woke up and realized that there was a connection between voodoo, black goo, and tattoos. And we found a definitive connection. We are in the midst of a tattoo voodoo ritual. You know, using needles to poke dolls. That's what this is all about at its root. It's some kind of mental ritual. And we're all stuck in it. And something happens when you get voodoo stuck with a needle. All right, let's go into the chat here. See what you guys are up to. I got run over by a turkey when I was little. Oh my gosh. Some people are saying 322 false flag. Good morning, Allie. Bale Buster. Bossy from Vermont. Yeah, we're in the midst of a voodoo ritual, you guys. So we're going to break all that down tomorrow. I've already got some notes started on that. And um, we're going to break down the ink. There's actually copper found in most tattoo ink. So it's all spiritual. It's a spell is what it is. Okay. Now, don't freak out if you've got tattoos. Most people have tattoos now. This isn't a condemnation of people that have tattoos. It's not what we do here on this channel. We don't condemn people. But we do notice the spiritual effects of things. Yep, the Italian Pepito link. Exactly, Jamie. You nailed it. He's got the tattoo on his arm. There, an eye pet goat too. Juan Pepito with the tattoo. This is a tattoo ritual. Yeah, like I said, don't worry about it if you have tattoos. This is It's a spell. It's a spell. So you can pray your way out of this at this point. But at a certain point, the strong delusion will take effect. And it's when I say tattoo, and when I say needles poking dolls, I'm talking about something else. But I can't really say it has something to do with smack scenes we'll get into all that tomorrow all right well i think we're going to go ahead and end the show today thanks everybody for showing up and we'll be back on here tomorrow take care and be safe you guys much love